Welcome to this week's episode of The Rutledge Perspective. And today we're gonna to be talking about choices. We all have them. And regardless of what your employer says, you really do have a choice, a choice in how you show up, a choice in how much work you do, a choice in whether you decide you want to continue to be there and be engaged, or whether it's time for you to make a decision to do something else. And all of those choices come into play when you are trying to decide what your next step is. There's a great podcast that's going on right now. I'm a huge Malcolm Gladwell fan, and he has a new podcast called Revisionist History. And actually, I think it's probably in season three now. And one of the episodes talks about um, Wilt Chamberlain and Rick Berry and that whole idea of granny shots and how Rick Berry was able to become one of the best free throw shooters in the NBA using this granny shot. And the whole idea around this podcast is what are the decisions we make? What are the pressures that we have around the decisions we make? And how is that pressure keeping us from doing things that we know are right? So for example, Wilt Chamberlain is arguably one of the best basketball players ever in the NBA, but his free throw shooting was horrendous. At one point, he and Rick Barry were teammates. They talked about it. Rick Barry even gave him some pointers on how to do this shot. And Wilt Chamberlain, in one game, actually used this underhanded shot and did extremely well. And his coach even told him, you would be indispensable to our team. You're great now, but you'd be indispensable if you really were a great free throw shooter. He only used the shot once. And even though the shot proved to be perfect for him, it worked, he knew it would work, he couldn't do it anymore. And when he was asked about it, his response was, you know, I know it's the right thing to do, but I felt silly. I felt stupid, so I didn't do it. So he was willing to make the choice to do something that was not going to benefit him because the feeling and the pressure around it was so great. So if you translate that into what you do every day, think about the choices you make. Think about the courage you have to have. Think about the pressure of the culture that's around you. And what exactly are you trying to do? What choices are you trying to make? Leaders in particular, we cannot treat our employees as if they don't have choices. When you start to treat employees like they don't have choices, you begin to devalue what they are bringing to you. You begin to devalue their input. You begin to devalue their unique perspective that could actually bring something to the table that you never thought of. But when you treat them like they don't have a choice, that means your attitude towards them or your ability to negate something that they would say seems normal. It seems okay because they don't have a choice except to stay. We saw this a lot in the recession in 2007, 2008, where employees were feeling very put upon. Employers were getting rid of people, so you now had one person doing the job of four. But because the economy was so bad, there wasn't as much pressure to treat people well. There wasn't as much pressure to do the right thing by employees. And my perspective is one of the reasons we're seeing so much around engagement now is because that self-fulfilling prophecy happened. When the economy got better and when people had choices again, those employees who had been loyal, those employees who'd been working really hard, those employees who'd done four jobs for you, but you treated them like they didn't have a choice, they now have a choice to go somewhere else. And now companies are scrambling saying, oh my gosh, how do we keep them? Oh my gosh, how do we make them stay? How do we engage them and make sure they're important? Leaders, you have a choice as well. You have a choice in how you treat your employees every day. You have a choice in how you decide to show up. You have a choice. And that's the Rutledge perspective for today. So the question I have for you is, what choices are you making? Are you paying attention to your employees? Are you as an employee really thinking about how you're feeling and what choice you're making every day and how you show up and what you do? Please leave your comments below. I really would like to hear from you and to understand what those things are that you're choosing. And who knows, your choice may actually help someone else who's going through the same thing. Now you can see a replay of this video or you can read the longer blog post or hear the podcast at my website on laurelrutledge.com. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Whether or not you are making a conscious decision, your choice may be to pull back. You're not gonna give 100% because why? Nobody appreciates it anyway. You're not necessarily gonna contribute. You're not necessarily gonna say, you know, I hear what they're saying, but this is the thing they're not thinking about and it really could have an impact. So make your decision, make your choice before you walk in the door every day. How are you going to show up? 
And if it's a chance where you really aren't feeling connected, you really aren't feeling like it's still the right place for you, then step back, slow down, take a moment to think and decide, is this just a moment? Is there stuff just happening and people are stressed out? Or do I really feel like this has been consistent enough that I might need to make a different choice. Whether that choice is to maybe look at a different department or a different job, something that gives me a chance to grow and expand. Or that choice is I might need to make a decision to move somewhere else because this organization isn't working for me. And understand that all of those choices are valid and all of those choices are reasonable. And you have the ability, the skill, and the power to make the choice that is right for you. So that's the Rutledge perspective for this week. Short and sweet, but really to the point. What choices are you making? Thank you so much for being here. I really want to know what you have done this week. What choices have you made this week and how that's impacted the way you show up every day? Leaders, have you noticed how you're treating your people and understanding the choices that they have to see? Thank you for visiting my village. I am so excited that you did and I'm truly humbled you chose to spend some of your time with me. If this or another episode of The Rutledge Perspective spoke to you, please give us a great rating. And please leave your comments as I want to know your perspective on this topic. Your comments form the basis for continuous improvement and additional content, and I take them very seriously. You can find more information on episodes of the show or book a discovery call with me on laurelrutledge.com. You can also follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Oh, and if there's someone you think would enjoy or benefit from The Rutledge Perspective, please pass it along.